question. Hi, Maria. How are you doing? Uh, hi, I'm good. Thanks. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Congratulations on your GMAT score 760. V45, Q49, amazing verbal and quant scores. Congratulations. Thank you very much. How does I have feel? to thank you for it. How does it feel? It feels really good to know that the hours I put into this studying, they had good results. It's really good. In fact, the other day when I got your message on LinkedIn, I was so happy because, you know, you kind of, that was one of the first messages I read in my morning. And I'm like, she made my day. <laughs> you know, So thank you for reaching out and, and, and sharing your story with me. And thank you for responding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell me, how, how did you hear about EGMAT? Uh, I heard about it from a friend of a friend uh, who got into one of the top universities. Um, and I asked how did they prepare for GMAT and they said they prepared using eGMAT platform and I checked it out. I tried the free trial um, and I said, yeah, this is something that will work for me. This is the way I study and all these lessons will be very useful for me. Good. Very nice. Thank you to the friend of your friend. <laughs> Yes, thank you for that. Yeah. So, um, so were you thinking of certain others? So what other kind of sources were you thinking of you utilizing before you honed into EGMAT? Uh, I was considering self-study using uh, books. I was also considering Manhattan Prep, um, GMAT Club, um, uh, right. also private tutoring, but. I think this platform was most suited to how I study and um, how I learn new skills. Uh, plus, it was, I think, very cost efficient. It was not overly expensive for me. Right, right. I'm glad. So walk me through um, what, so I, so I see that you prepared both for verbal and quant. So let's talk about mm -hmm. quant first and then we'll go into verbal. So what did you, so how, how did you utilize the platform for quant prep? Um, Yes, so I realized I need refreshment of mathematics knowledge since school. Mm -hmm. um, also, I have not studied mathematics in English language, so I didn't know all the terminology, for example, uh, like equilateral, mm -hmm. <laughs> like things like that. What does it mean? I didn't know it in English. Okay. Uh, so I needed this refreshment of mathematics plus learning terminology plus learning how to solve GMAT um i'm curious type of question. So, so i'm curious in what medium did you learn mathematics so you're from uh, georgia right yes yes i learned at school in georgian in georgian okay georgia. wow okay yeah okay <laughs> that's interesting uh, yeah. mm -hmm. the okay. formulas all, all of the time are the same but terminology is different mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so translation is required okay good so then yeah so walk me through yeah uh, yes, so I started with number properties. I think that is the trickiest part of GMAT because mm -hmm. like you know all of these concepts, but the questions are not so easy to answer. So it was EGMAT was very useful for me to master uh, number properties questions. Mm -hmm. So refreshed my knowledge for algebra, geometry, um, like advanced topics, which are probability sets, mm -hmm. all that. Um, and I learned how to solve this GMAT type questions very quickly. Uh, I think the test efficiency was the one you know, which EGMAT helped me the most because you don't actually need to solve anything and you cannot solve anything on the test. It requires a lot of time. So you can just uh, understand whether the information is sufficient from some data mm -hmm. and some analysis and not fully do it. Um, Really happy so, to hear yeah, like I, that test efficiency is something that you were able to grasp from the course because yeah. that is the very intent of the course that you know you shouldn't really have to go into calculations if they are not required so i'm very happy that you were able to grasp that good all right yes so like um, at the final stage i looked at the question i did and in about a minute and a half in two minutes i had the answers or i had the answers whether it's sufficient or not mm -hmm. So I was very happy with the results of my right. mathematics preparation. Okay. And I see that you utilize colorinium as well, right? For, for quant? Uh, yes, I uh, utilized it for cementing quizzes. 
for cementing quizzes. Yes, I'm going to share my screen. I'm just going to show um, show your account over here. So if you look at the last 20 over here, so you had amazing accuracies for hard questions um, in, in all the three topics that you utilized uh, Scholaranium for. And amazing. I mean, this is really good. You, you did cementing using the right process all in a single day. That's really good. So let's look at algebra here. So again, same thing over here as well, all, all in a single day. So you did a lot of strategic review over here. Did you utilize the error log? Um, I have not prepared error log, but I I realized what I didn't know. So yeah, I did strategic review. Okay. I think these cementing quizzes were most useful, again, for number properties, which mm -hmm. I uh, studied for a little earlier. Like I mm -hmm. think I did it in January and then I did the rest of my gym and preparation starting from May. Okay. So it was very useful for me to remember everything I learned in uh, January. And I think this cementing quizzes is a great, <laughs> great thing mm -hmm. because you get to apply all of your knowledge, you get to learn and then you gain confidence in the questions they don't scare you anymore. Good, very nice. I'm very happy to hear that. Yeah. And and you did the course also very thoroughly. When I go through your number properties course, I mean, it's just you didn't leave anything to pace engine. And usually what we see is that people utilize the pace engine, but you knew that, you know, you it, despite scoring well, you would go through everything. I mean, over here, for example, you didn't skip any of the files despite scoring 100 percent. So that mm -hmm. is really good. And your diligence shows up in your in your practice quiz results. I mean, 100 percent and this is all in first attempt so that's amazing so so yeah so it seems you had a very strong foundation i know you didn't go through statistics files maybe you were lack of time <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you felt you know with process skills you were good but i mean your results in cementing show that that you did the course in such a good manner that you were able to breeze through cementing so good good um so anything else about quant that you would want to add before we move to verbal um I think there are some tricks, not tricks, but easy ways to solve the questions, solve the questions or solve mathematical problems that, for example, I didn't study at school, mm -hmm. for example, such things as how to um, calculate percentage of a number in a very easy manner without doing the calculations, mm -hmm. large calculations mm -hmm. in the day before the exam. So good, good. That saved right. me some time. Very nice. Um, so if there were, let's say, if there was one thing that you wanted to recommend to students with regards to their quant preparation, what would that be? I think um, they should start with concepts because refreshment of concepts that you learned at school right now is very useful uh, later in solving questions because when you see the question, you automatically realize the direction you should go in and you realize the path how to solve it so i think you should not skip a uh, concept and you should not just go to uh, solving tests mm -hmm. oh, don't skip concepts okay good good so let, let's talk about verbal prep uh, where is it that you needed help in verbal and in v45 where did you start off from do you know what your starting score was uh, for verbal, I actually know because I did, uh, but I did it on GMAT Club. They're one of their mocks for verbal. I got V31. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And at that stage, I had some refreshed my memory of grammar, but it turns out you don't need <laughs> just all the grammar for mm -hmm. GMAT. You need to know some specific things that grammar books don't usually focus on. Um, so yeah, I got V31, and then I got V. Uh, 45 on an exam. Mm -hmm. So what made the difference uh, in your verbal prep? That was actually sentence correction uh, preparation. After V31, I started this, uh, reading and reading and listening to the sentence correction um, lessons on EGMAT and doing all the tests. And that's what uh, helped me raise my score. Okay. Good, good. And I, I see that you went through, in verbal, you went through sentence correction in a lot of detail. And I'm opening up your sentence correction course here. I did some um, things twice <laughs> for <laughs> correction, like modifiers. 
Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, amazing scores here, really good scores. So whenever I look at, you know, the, the, the scores and verbs in, in, in practice quizzes and, and higher scores there, that, that tells me that the student has really learned all the stuff very well before proceeding on to the score, uh, to the final quiz. And here I see that the, this file you did multiple times because you won't take 40 minutes to do it once. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so, so again, uh, so it's a really, uh, so it's a really good stuff over here. So you went through everything in detail. And then um, cementing, I did you do cementing as well over here? Let me see. Uh, I I don't remember actually whether I did it for sentence correction. Yeah, did you, I? you did, you did, oh. yes, yes. Yeah, so you did cementing also very well and all in the same, all on the same day. So good, good. Uh, critical reasoning, I don't think critical reasoning you, you, you went through, you, you did partial course, right? So, so yes. first let's talk about sentence correction. So what, mm -hmm. what helped you in sentence correction? Yes, you know, concept, true, concepts, absolutely. Anything else that, that stuck to you in, in the sentence mm -hmm. course? Um, I think what this course does is it focuses on several key areas and in a manner which is tested on GMAT. So it doesn't focus on everything. It doesn't make you learn uh, like um, 200 words and there are different forms. It just focuses on the areas that are most frequently tested and areas, for example, parallelism. Uh, it's very heavily tested. Um, as I learned how to uh, correct parallelism questions, it was very useful for me. Okay. Okay, good, good. So it gave you that confidence that you can handle these questions. Yes. And that's evident from your results in the in the score in, um, in the course as well as in the cementing quizzes. So good, very nice, very nice. Um, so if you were to, so how about RC? RC came naturally to you? Um, I think uh, in RC, I did some, I did concepts and I did some application files. Mm -hmm. uh, and after that, uh, I realized I was good at it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. good, um, good, good. So, so I can see that you utilize the course where you felt you needed help. You needed help in SC, so you spent a lot of time there. With CR, I see that you went through the inference module in detail, and then after that, yes. you scored very well in CR. So mm -hmm. tell me about critical reasoning. So you didn't, yeah, so tell mm -hmm. me about that. I think inference was the hardest one for me. Mm -hmm. um, even at the last day, I... Well, yeah, I revised. I did the revision for in France, I, and I didn't remember some of the things. Uh, so in France was um, kind of the hardest one for me to get correct. And after that, uh, assumption was not that hard. And after you learn the how assumption questions work and how you pre-think, after that everything is easy. So, so yeah, pre-think yes, worked uh, for you. Pre-thinking uh, worked for you. Yes, pre-thinking is the key that helped me here. Um, Tell me why. Before that, so before learning about this pre-thinking and how to do this process, I would just read the question. Um, Stein, what felt right to me, felt, felt logical. But I didn't do the pre-thinking analysis. So some questions, uh, in some questions, more than one answer seemed very logical to me mm -hmm. because I had not thought about the direction the answer should go. Mm -hmm. So after I learned and mastered pre-thinking, then all of the critical reasoning questions were quite easy for me. Well, except the bold phase, which I learned separately. And right, right. So you, you, you mentioned a very in, in interesting term that you didn't do pre-thinking earlier, so you didn't know which direction the answer choice should go in. Yeah. Right, that's a very important thing. And students, many a times, they feel that they have to arrive at the exact pre-thinking uh, in, in your analysis that is actually utilized in one of the answer in, in, in the correct answer choice. But what, what you've really summarized very well is that if you need to know the direction in which the, the correct answer should go in and, and there could be multiple di correct directions to go in. So, so good, very, very nice, very nicely done. Um, all right, so if you were to recommend, let's say a couple of things for, for verbal prep for to, to GMAT aspirants, what would that be? Um, that would be learned by thinking and practice it, maybe like several questions, maybe 20 questions, 30 questions. And after you have mastered pre-thinking, um, you can focus on tests. And also, I think it's important to focus on the types of questions, like what each questions re question requires from you. Once you have also mastered the 
art of understanding the question, then you can find the answer very right? well. Um, also, boldface is, is something that needs to be learned separately because it's mm -hmm. very specific, something specific. Uh, I would also say that sentence correction is not an easy part. It's probably the hardest, so some time should be spent there mm -hmm. until okay. a person is very comfortable with sentence correction questions. When, how did you get to know that you're comfortable with it? What is it that, that told you that you're comfortable with SC now? Uh, yes, so after I had completed my theoretical studies and the quizzes on IGMAT, I went to uh, write the official guide questions, the verbal and quant. I did about maybe 200 questions for verbal and 200 for quant. And when I was doing those questions, I realized that I was pretty good at it. Um, it also does automatic error lock for you. Not error lock, but it uh, locks the questions you answered wrong. So you can revisit them multiple times and uh, until you finally are um, comfortable with the concepts and the application. Good, good. Very nice. But you did the official questions after you went through stage one yes. and stage two of cementing. Before that, you didn't. Okay, good. Very nice. Oh. Very nice. Good. And I see that you didn't take any of the Sigma X mocks on the platform. Yes. Right? Uh, that's right. I didn't take mocks at all until the last week. Mm -hmm. um, okay. During the last week, I took the two official mocks, official. which are free up to your re register. And yeah, when I saw my first mock um, score, I thought that I don't need much more. And Good. I will just write one more and that's it. Good. Not to nice. overdo it and not to get tired from this exam. Perfect. So, Mariam, I will say one thing. I mean, you have handled GMAT prep very, very logically. You, you, didn't, uh, you did stage one very well. Then you did stage two right there and then, even though you had a break between uh, between your number properties, right? But still you did not, you, you you picked up from where you left, you revised and then you took cementing. So that, that was really good. And you were, you had that razor sharp focus on stage one learning, then on cementing. And only then you took full length mocks. I mean, and that's really good. And people shouldn't, really, if they go through stages one and two very well, then they shouldn't really have to take more than a couple of mocks. And that's exactly what you experienced. Now with the official practice that you did, that added to your confidence level because th this official practice uh, gave you that kind of confidence that yes, my ability is there. Right. So that was also a very good confidence boost for you that helped you in your exam. So really very well done, Maria. So congratulations for that. You know, yes, the end end score is really good, but I always look for the journey that 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 led you to that destination. And your journey is is really commendable. So congratulations for that. Uh, thank you. I followed your instructions and they worked for me. Yes, good, good. Very nice. All right, Mariam, good luck for your life. Uh, I know application season is ahead. I really wish you all the very best and keep in touch. Let me know which, which school you end up in and, uh, and, and, and do drop in, drop in a hello every now and then, <laughs> right? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bye. Mariam. Mm -hmm.